Well, hi there, racing fans, and welcome to another Winning Way show where we've got a tremendous show. We've got um, lots of very good insights into the racing business. And then we chat to Joey Ramsden, um, the trainer of the July winner and also the Group, group One Mercury Sprint winner of the weekend, um, about his life, his horses, and he's just one of those people that you love chatting to. The half an hour will fly by. You'll love the interview. Uh, he's a great guy to have on the show and uh, Lef, uh hard to pin him down, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, he's a busy man, you know, nice to see him uh, make the time to come and join us because uh, he's a very good trainer and he's proved it again with winning uh, the two big group ones. It's been a good year for Marcus Eusta down here. He also won Marshall one in the gold medallion, you know, so uh, well done to those guys. Yeah, they've done extremely well. But just going back to the sporting front, we had some great sport over the weekend. Start with the Sharks, they uh, fell into the um, playoffs at the Super yeah. Rugby. Do you think they'll go any further? Well, they've got the Hurricanes away. I think after the game, the next three words they will hear is uh, beef or chicken, sir. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be on their way home. You know, the Hurricanes are the best side for me. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 the best side. funny enough, you know, one's got to just say, look back when uh, Sharks went to New Zealand this year, they were very good. They beat two top sides. They beat the champions of last year, albeit with a man short. So they've got a, a squeak, but yeah. that's all I can give them. Yeah. Unfortunately, it just doesn't seem to be any vision. You know, without Lambie, I think it's difficult for them. Yeah, I think you know, he, I he's think the key. The, the, the new guy, what's it, Garth April, yeah. his defensive skills were showing up, you know, yeah. and, and I think that's where he's young still. He's yeah. young, he's a very good player. He's yeah. young, yeah. So let's hope we come right, but uh, sure, I think. Uh, the Lions tough will call. win this, this thing. You think the Lions go all the way? Yeah, yeah. Lions will go. They're very good side. Very good very side. Good side yeah. yeah. Then the, the, the golf obviously was unbelievable. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, I think most sporting people were glued to it. Whether you like golf or not, it was just wonderful to watch and uh, very good to see that the first Swedish man to win it. He's, he's been a great player for years. And, and the top two were so far ahead of the field, you know, they, were, they just matched each other stride for stride and a couple of putts had lipped out for Mickelson, might have swung the whole thing, but wonderful, great play by both of them. Uh, unfortunately, while the golf was on, there was, um, there was the German um, Superbike Grand Prix. The, do you ever watch the motorbikes? No, only if I'm in my car. Okay, well, <laughs> well Mark Marquez won seven in a row. It Who? Was, uh, Mark Marquez, he's a Spaniard. He's a oh, fantastic a comedian for dead. <laughs> Mark, Mark Marquez. Sounds, yeah, like Mark Marquez. sounds like a he dog. Sounds like a dog with a hair. He the doctor, yes? Valentino Rossi. It is, I know it, Valentino it is Rossi, just yeah. different class than motorbike racing. Yeah, it's fantastic. And all those guys. James, what do you, going back to golf, what do you think, why do they call that guy Beef or Mr. Beef or... Because he's a he's a <laughs> he's a beefy guy. Well, he is a beefy guy. He was beat, wasn't he? He's, he's fantastic, yeah. isn't he? That's what the game needed. Yeah, they absolutely. needed. And I heard the commentator say, America loves him, England love him. He's he's got a big beard. He's got all those tats he's, sticking he doesn't out. Look like, he doesn't look like he's English. He looks like he could be a Scottish or a Canadian lumberjack or, or um, 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 American. Um, but he can play, James. Southerner. James, he can play. He can play. He's, he's a one. And nearly yeah. gave up. He yeah. said, "I'm getting out the game." He really is a good player, and uh, I think that's what the game needs. You need people who are going to go cheer. They, they shout for Cooch, yeah. and he's a great player. Yeah. They're going to shout for Beef. <laughs> <laughs> it is fun, I must say, and that's what sport's all about, to keep you entertained. And Beef Johnston will keep us entertained for a long, long time, better than most of those tennis players anyway. Right, we're going to go and have a look at uh, Three to Follow and move on. Dad, distorted humor. He's probably one of his best sons instead. All oh, have another wins the derby. Oh, have another in the Lilacs and lace, 48 to one upset. He's just a big, strong, leggy horse. Right, well, we kick off and go uh, to the first race at the Vol on Tuesday, the 12th of July. It was uh, made in juvenile plate. They went 1,000 metres. Take a look at this one. Uh, Matador Man. 
Yeah, this horse, unfortunately, it doesn't get out. He's a Toreador, uh, bred by the Scott brothers out of Magokme, and as you can see, walks out of the gate, and uh, the rider elects to go towards the outside initially, scrubbing him just to hold his position because they're going very quickly on the dry ground, and the horse is lost and, and sort of prayerless for those who've backed it. Well, he was backed in. Um, he's bred by the Scott brothers, and he obviously can run like hell with horse because look at him, he just scythes through the field. Um, at the most difficult time to come after them, the 600 to 400 are all starting to pick up. He moves up there and gets beaten by one. Yeah, this, the, the winner is a horse hit in the front now, Hello Mister. That runs a very good race, but this horse has really come from nowhere. Remember the name, Matador Man. He's, I think his run comes to an end in the final furlong because uh, Master Builder starts running on the outside. But this is a sparkling debut. And James, I have no doubt if, if, if he pinged the gate, he'd have won. Oh, there's absolutely no doubt about it, because here he just gets ridden hands and heels, and um, he wasn't making up ground on the winner, but my goodness, he must have given the winner 10 lengths going through the 400 meter mark. A great run. There he is, the black horse with the yellow cap. Remember him, Matador man. He's certainly worth having a close look at. We then move on to Gravel on the poly track, and that is a Wednesday meeting, made in juvenile plate, uh, fillies, and we picked up a filly called Aphrodite's Reign. Let's go and have a look at her. Yeah, another one that we found for you that walks out the gate, doesn't know much about it, and uh, the <coughs> excuse me, goddess of love, Aphrodite, Aphrodite's reign, it's spelled differently, but uh, who's to worry about that? In the black cap, it's lost, gets a little bit of a, a check, and wants to get rolling, and uh, finds itself at the back. The winner's the grey horse with the green cap on the inside, that's Royal Rose, who uh, Frank Robinson put the blinkers on, runs a good race, has to chase down Bubbly Knight, they're the first two. The horse we found in the black cap runs third. Yeah, she's by Argonaut out of a national emblem mare, bred by Bull and Stud, um, Eugene Freeman and his dad Frank. And there she is now out of the picture. Well, she just comes in the picture, comes for a run with a big white face on the outside. But by all intents and purposes, this race has won already. Yeah, you can see uh, Fish Sturgeon's timed at rice on, on the winner because uh, Bubbly Knight's run a good race. And these two have, have asserted, but look at the source on the outside. She just gets third ahead of Fires of Calais. But... Uh, I thought it was a good day, you seen she never got out the gates on time. Yeah, look, she'll go on and uh, win them uh, a race in the next couple of starts, look for the right race for her. She looks like she'll win a race, but I'm not sure about the strength of the field. But then we move on to Saturday the 16th of July, uh, Maiden Juvenile Plate 1600, it was a juvenile plate actually, 1600 metres. and. Um, Canamar was rumoured to have a very good horse in this race, and it was a first-timer by philanthropist, the Slade. It gave itself no chance from the start, but really ran on well. Yeah, it. What, what people have got to consider, and you don't see in this video, is that there's a howling tailwind. Howling. Howling tailwind. There was, actually, nothing came from behind the first no. four on the whole day. You, know you had I mean? to be had up to there. had to be right up there. Yeah. I thought there's some very nice horses in this race. Let's go and have a look at this race. The horse is called the Slade. And uh, it, it's a half-brother uh, to Africa Burn, who was a Group 1 winner for Fred Crabia. That was trained by Dean, so this is, runs in the uh, Drakenstein Silks of yep. Gaynor Rupert. And you'll see it's soon under pressure to stay in the race because it's, uh, it's, it's near the back. You can see it now, it's been dropped out to last. And uh, the, the, the eventual winners in the red caps, what's called Step Up, that Vaughan bought, uh, bred by Mace Roberts, the winner, and Vaughan bought it cheaply from him. And a very nice horse. The pace was on, as James alluded to, because the runner-up is the Boxster, who's up close in the yellow and red. And the third horse is the grey, who gets a little inconvenience up the stretch. But the horse we found is lost. Absolutely lost. And as we say, there was a howling tail when it was impossible to make up the ground. And you'll see this horse runs a really good race. And in fact, uh, there are a couple of horses that run really well here because... Uh, the form from a day like this, you're going to battle to find a stand-up because there was just... Uh, so much speed involved in this yeah. type of racing with this wind. As you say, the, the form doesn't do justice to the wind. And, and cantering up is, is step up your winner. And still last, and uh, just being niggled along now, is the Slade. And uh, step up goes straight past the leader very quickly. Uh, that compounds. The big grey horse on the outside gets slightly inconvenienced because the boxer's drifting out in the yellow and, and here right down the inside is the slate. Yeah and he starts running on really well this horse. Um, he, he is picking them off but it's just very difficult to make up any ground at this stage and I think that you'll find this horse um, by philanthropist is definitely going to go um, over a 
fitter ground. He turned out to be a very nice horse. He was a good-looking horse in the parade ring and certainly looked like um, a horse that you can uh, have a close look at in the future. And he might be quite classy. Okay, we're going to move on and we're going to have a look at um, a blast from the past coming up to the Gold Cup at the end of the month. And um, let's go and see if you can pick up this winner of the Gold Cup. Soft falling rain, pull it clear. Soft falling rain, won the SA Nursery by three. Racing, racing in the 2000 Guineas. Gates fly and they're racing in the Godolphin Mile. They're off and racing. Weight didn't matter. Class tells, soft falling rain, much too good. Soft falling rain, an impressive Guineas winner. Soft falling rain is drawing clear. He's made it seven out of seven by winning here today. But it's soft falling rain who is powering away. We'll see out the mile in style, a high class performer. Wins the day of Joel Stakes. South Africa's premier long distance horse racing event. Start at the lever around the finishing post on two occasions. And let's give him a chance to settle down for a leader. Two strikes is right there. Golden parachute, night to remember. Along the inside of that, Power Lord has a good position. Yes, predestination on the outside. Saf one along that inside. Dance at daylight. Just behind that one is Aslan Kolkata. Il San Pietro, six lengths off them. In writing, then comes Captain's Wild. Behind that one, Saluki, Hawkeye, Key Castle. Lorenzo Marks is one of the trailers with 2,500 metres to go. Arcola's on the outside, and Dolomite's the trailer. As they settle down, going behind the tote board with 2,400 metres to go. They'll be coming back into view shortly at the 2,400 in the Cannon Gold Cup. Predestination half length in the Cannon Gold Cup. Golden parachute right there, then two strikes, Jeppy's Reef, Aslan around them, Don set daylight, Safwan on the outside, Il San Pietro, they are followed by Calcutta, Golden Parachute. Top of the lane in the Cannon Gold Cup, predestination the leader, night to remember Aslan, Il San Pietro, Golden Parachute running on with Aslan, coming down to the 300 metre marker, night to remember, predestination, Il San Pietro, Jeppies Reefs running on, Cole Cutters on the outside, towards the inside in writing, night to remember, Il San Pietro and Cole Cutter over the last hundred, Cole Cutter down the inside, Aslan, night to remember, it's Aslan in front, over the last 50 and Kolkata it's going to go to Aslan from Kolkata, then night to remember Il San Pietro, Jeppies Reeve, further back in the field dance at daylight, Saluki, Arcola Golden Parachute and further back to two Well, Sean Terry, 1-2 um, Gavin Larina, Raymond Danielson, um, yeah. great race for champion them. trainer uh, yeah. Sean Terry and uh, funny enough, two of the horses who ran down the field have gone on to win this race. The next three Reef couple of years, yeah. And in writing, yeah. So a good field this year. And Night to Remember was a good start. Duncan Owls is a great horse. And uh, um, uh, Sean Terry's just gone from strength to strength. He's just had 200 winners, which is a national yeah, record. 201. 200 yeah. winners in a season. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And, and just one takes a backward step when we consider the two year olds he stepped out. Yeah. Colts and Phillies, magnificent yeah. strength. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a string and a half, Sean. He's a very good judge and a very good trainer. And uh, this showed it, winning the Gold Cup. We're going to move on and we're going to um, have a little break and we'll be back with you. Followed by Londa Lozzi, who's drifted deep off that turn and races in behind those. Lady Didio races next, and Charisma now starts to make good progress over towards the inside. They spread across the track now. Charisma is coming home hard. Don't know why. It's still right there between runners. In behind them, La Flambe is weaving her way through the traffic, but Charisma has come forward now to pick it up over towards the inside. La Flambe is chasing hard behind that, but Charisma is in front, and that's where she's going to stay. Charisma goes on to win, and to win it by about two and a half lengths from La 
Laughlin Bay or Call Me Darling. They're involved in a photo. Don't know why it was further back. Londa Losey behind those. Then came... Well, on your Interbet account, you could have got uh, two to one about this horse. He was a blinker strike. He'd been there or thereabouts uh, multiple times. He's just crying for the blinker's charisma. And uh, Son of Silvana ended up winning convincingly for those of you that uh, got the best yeah, price. Absolutely. A good price for charisma. She uh, had he, the form. Is it a uh, she? she? It's a she, James. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got another difference between a boy and girl. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know a few people who've had charisma bypass ops off the horses that got beat. There's plenty of charisma <laughs> bypass ops. <laughs> yeah. But this is bred by Pippa McCobra. It's out of a Fort Wood mare. It will go all day. Yes. Um, and I think the blinkers made a big difference. And certainly, when I saw the blinkers, I got straight onto Interbet and had a little strike. Yeah, Walter's horse. Yeah, Walter's horse. Um, uh, owned by uh, Aventure people. They're obviously going to keep it to breed with because it's yeah. out of a very nice mare. And um, as I say, two to one. Whew, when you're getting two to one for your money, you better get into Interbet. We're going to move on and uh, have a look at what we've got in current affairs. If you love soccer and you play the Toad, you won't believe what Interbet has to offer you. All the excitement of Toad betting on your computer or your cell phone. It's simple. Choose your teams and your bets, work out what your combinations will cost, see how big the pool is and place your bets. You can even track your bet live as it happens and get updates on your progress. It's all the fun of the Toad on your phone. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now at www.interbet.co.za and you could be a winner. Welcome to another edition of Current Affairs. Only one stake race around the country, but an important stake race, a Group 1 held at Gravel. The Mercury Sprint has always been a very good race. And uh, James, turned out to be uh, a very good race for game for Joey Ramsden and for the uh, Marcus Ninger at Derek Brookman, their team have got to be happy. They've had a wonderful, as I said earlier, a wonderful KZN season. And uh, Red Ray, third run back, blinkers. A lot of people thought it would run well. I, I gave it a big chance. What was interesting, James, and I think you might be able to answer this, there were six trippies in the race. Yeah. I can't think of a group one that's had six stallions in the race. I know Captain Nell's had many over the years in, in big races, but there were six trippies. Do you know if a, a race has been... Well, I know that Silvano ran first, second, and third in the July. I don't know I, how many I he don't, had. Yeah, that, very good point. But I, don't, I don't think he had six. I might yeah. be wrong. This was, wasn't the biggest field, but... Uh, it was very good. And uh, Western Winter, what a great stallion. Yeah. Well, the sad thing about it was that the dam, Nakarat, um, died during the week. Uh, 20 years old, she'd been an unbelievable broodmare. She's uh, thrown 10 winners, seven black type winners, including Red Ray, obviously, and that horse Brutal Force, you very know, good and Ad Adobe Pink. Just every single foal that she's thrown. And yeah. she's a South African bred mare. She's by part of Qua, she was, okay. um, you know, who uh, was a champion for Jeff Woodruff. And um, it just shows you how pedigree comes through. Yeah. Um, but uh, fantastic. Jay Ramson, uh, you know, to get a horse back from Dubai, who's, uh, you know, an you entire five-year-old entire. problems. Oh, you've got to do a good job to get this horse yeah. to win. And um, he did a fantastic job. Let's go and pick him up at the start. We're ready, Mercury. And they sprinting away and trip to heaven stood losing three, four lanes when the starter said go. Talk to the Stars is also one of the trailers, but trying to overcome the draw. Captain Alfredo's very quick. The red sleeves and cap. Red rays right there. Gold Storm followed by Night Trip near the rail. The yellow cap. Trip T is real princess. Bob Bozer then comes Heartland about seven lengths off them. Trip T, Lana Falcon further back as fly by night. And then we drop back to Trip to Evan who's got about seven or eight to go. 
window. Talk to the stars, nine or ten lengths off them with accelerator. Out of turn for home, Captain Alfredo leads the Mercury Sprint. Red Ray is second, Gold Storm, then Night Trip. They're followed by Real Princess Triptease. Talk to the stars, got 10, 11 lengths to make up. Trip to Heaven is on the outside, and it's Captain Alfredo, the leader. Red Ray becomes the danger. Between them, Gold Storm down the inside, Night Trip. And now Red Ray puts on the pressure, and it's Red Ray who hit the front from Real Princess. And Red Ray is going on. Red Ray will win the Mercury Sprint. Second will go to Night Trip, Real Princess, Gulf Storm, and talk to the stars. Well, there we are, another big one for Arthur Marcus, a superb jockey. He always has his horse in the right place, James. He does everything right from the gate. He's just a master. And uh, basically, once he asked him to quicken past uh, Kaname is also was Captain racing. Alfredo, Captain yeah. Alfredo was race over, eh, James. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I, I was. If you watch the race, the horse that ran the race of the race was Talk to the Stars. Yeah. Absolutely no chance turning into the straight. Ran fifth, flying at the death. Never really found a clear run until Lorena got the stick in the left hand at the last hundred. He could be years. the best sprinter in the country. I, I, I think he's different class, this horse. You know, I know that it was set weights and um, he was expected to win. But uh, from, from where he came from, Sure. He ran past most of the field, and yeah. not many horses made up that type of ground in the race. Um, it was one of those races hard to make up the ground. Yeah, with that wind coming through. But Arthur in the right place, Red Ray, as I say, Joey Ramson, well done to Derek Brookman, well done to, of course, Marcus and Ingrid Yester. They've been a wonderful season up here. And, and to Lummerskral, who bred it, you know, yeah. that um, uh, Lummerskral's got the new owners. That's uh, right. And uh, uh, they're a, a, a source of absolute brilliance. You know, you can really, really buy good horses. Yeah, and, the boys, uh, you, know, you know. Yeah. They're really done well. The real princess, the, the, the filly ran well, James. Yeah. But I, I still think, you know, master training feet. And um, Joey, I know we're going to get him later and we'll chat to him about it. But it, to bring a horse back that's been traveling around the world, that's an entire. It's hard to bring mm. entires back. You yeah. know, they don't concentrate. He put the, gave him two warm-ups. Put the blinkers on it, won the group one. And this horse would probably go to stud and make a stallion. Yeah, I, I would yeah. I would support a horse like this. I think he might be a very mm. good stallion. There's a couple of Western winters at stud. Yeah, yeah and so cert certainly w w wouldn't... Uh, well, uh, it wouldn't frighten me. Argonaut's um, the, the, the one, and he's starting to produce nice. Uh, uh, produce Mickey's got one. Horse, yeah. so, uh, Mickey, Mickey's got that very good horse that uh, Dean Kahneman trained. Well, just talking about Mickey, um, uh, uh, there was a, uh, an article in TDN from a guy called Lucas Marquardt. Now, I, we told, talked about him after July. He had had something to say after July. TDN, for those of you who don't know, is Thoroughbred Daily News which is an American publication, and it has an enormous amount of readers worldwide. And Lewis McCord wrote an article on five reasons to come to South Africa, five good reasons. Oh, okay. Yeah. What were and they? one of them was obviously Summer Hill Study popped in there and spent a couple of hours there, which is a great reason to come Absolutely, here. So it is yeah. a showcase uh, study in Kwazulu Natal. Um, the second reason was um, that he went to the Springbok Park, uh, um, you know, the, the Lodge. All, yeah, Springbok Lodge, where yeah. all the, the, I think the Springboks are in that lodge, or they used they to. Used to yeah, yeah, yeah. They used to, yeah, they used to. He said, the racing, you've got to come here for the racing. Um, and um, I don't know, the fourth reason didn't make any difference to me. What was it? Because it was uh, uh, the exchange rate. He says, you buy everything for nothing. Yeah, it's That's ridiculous true. how cheap it is. And the fifth reason? But the fifth reason was the reason I like that. Uh, he said he was introduced to something called Biltong. Okay, at a farm stall. Now, he says he's had beef jerky and all that, but Biltong's made differently, and he says it takes differently. He says it was worth taking on the U.S. Customs to get some over there. <laughs> Lewis yeah, Macquart, Biltong, thank you. We love, uh, yeah, we love wrote, having these uh, international... Uh, Lucas Macquart. Um, he's, a, he's obviously a, a reporter for the TDN, so and he, he was out here with, um, with the whole team. Oh, that so was fantastic. excellent. You know, yeah. he, he, Biltong, you could have met Bill Lambert too. Yeah. Bill Lambert, that would that have been another Another reason, Another reason out, Bill yeah. Lambert. I made a great you know? speech at yours due on Friday. Yes. Bill, he's a brilliant man. Brilliant man. <clears throat> okay. Team Vela, just talking about American Team Vela, had its first winner in Korea. Fantastic. You know who trained it? Bart. Bart, our oh man. Our oh man, Bart Russ. Well, wonderful nice for, for him. Isn't that nice for Bart? Barry, uh, Barry watches Owens at uh, horses all over the place, hasn't he? He's had 18 w winners in 18 different countries, Barry. 
Sure, that's an incredible yeah. achievement. As uh, Indian Charlie calls him, white shoes. Yeah, Indian you know, shoes. I love Indian Charlie. Where Charlie's. did you get that name Very white shoes. Yeah. Yeah. But he's, said, he's uh, a very talented man when one considers where he's gone. Yeah, well, the, uh, talking about the Americans, California Crump getting ready for Group 2 next weekend. And then going for the Pacific Classic, which is, um, the, uh, I think they call it the Big Cap, don't they? And, no, uh, the Santa Anita. Santa Anita, yeah. yeah. That's the Big Cap. No, the, the, the Pacific the, the, Classic, Del Mar. Del Mar. That's right. And yeah, Trevor Denman's back at Del Mar. Oh, is he? Yeah, Fantastic. Trevor Denman is, is going to keep going for the next 10 years, just calling Del Mar. Del Mar. Yeah, well, he, he loves Del Mar. Yeah, funny enough, he sent me an email on, on the, they, they, they did an interview on Trevor Denman, asked him why he's going back, and they're so excited that he's calling mm -hmm. there, but he, he said, when he first started at Santa Anita, it used to be fantastic. He'd get in his car and go. He'd now sit in the car for two hours to go a short distance because of the traffic to go to uh, Santa Anita. Santa Anita and two hours right. back, he said it would become a nightmare in the end, you know. But Del Mar's down the road from where yeah. he lives, from his farm. You know? No, no, it's miles away from his farm. Oh, is it? Yeah, miles and miles away. Oh, but okay, he, I thought that he had a farm there down south. Minnesota. California. Oh, Minnesota. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. his farm's in Minnesota. So he's, he's going to be there calling. And as California Chrome, trained by... Uh, our friend uh, Art Sherman. Art Sherman. Now he's a ringer for who? I don't know. Arvin Moore. Arvin. <laughs> I sat at the table next to him in Dubai. Yeah. It's <laughs> Arvin Moore. I literally said hello, Arvin. You know? <laughs> Art Sherman looks just like Arvin Moore, and uh, good luck to him. They, they've stuck him in with him, and he's done a great job. He's earned well, a lot of money. Yeah, and uh, it fired a bullet. You know what a bullet is uh, in his final workout. Quickest time? Yeah, quickest time. One out of 83 over five furlongs. That's um, 59 and some change. And he's a 10 furlong horse? And he's a 10 furlong horse. So it shows you how good he is. He probably runs 259 and some changes for um, five furlongs, another five furlongs. So he's um, uh, getting ready to run Pacific Classic. We look forward to seeing that. Um, what else we got? James, we've got the Oaks, Irish Oaks. Oh, There's an interesting yeah. connection there. Very mm -hmm. interesting. You know, it, it was, uh, tell us, uh, you, you looked into the race because you picked up that uh, this daughter of Galileo who had flopped in the English Oaks. Yeah. Her name's, he uh, what, Heaven? Seventh Heaven. Seventh Heaven, I've written yeah. it down here, so yeah. wrongly. Seventh Heaven, Galileo, she won the Irish Oaks for uh, Aidan O'Brien. Now, she's a half-sister to Crusade, is that accurate? That's absolutely right. Half-sister to Crusade who stands here at Scott Brothers in Quasili Natal. And my goodness, people have gone out there and bought the Crusades. They're yeah. beautiful looking horses. And hopefully he's the, uh, the start of the crusade to Kwasili Natal yeah, because that's um, right. you need a decent horse. He's by Mr. Greeley Crusade. He won the Middle Park Stakes. He was a very good racehorse himself. And um, I think he's a huge asset. Yeah, I agree. So that was 7th Heaven winning the Irish race. It's wonderful when, when uh, fellow family members perform well all over the world. And a lot of people have queued up to buy crusades and, uh, and I hope they're well rewarded. I liked a lot of them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it looks like um, that's about it for us. Longines. They, put, Longines. Out the, they uh, put out the list of the best horses in the world. And the horse that tops it, James, I don't know, but you do. Yeah, uh, Ashinikari. Big pun? Ashinikari. Okay, yeah. you can buy Shini curry up in Hillcrest or somewhere. <laughs> now, this is Japanese, you get uh, hari curry if you start to <laughs> play nonsense here, okay? Yeah. It's a Japanese horse, he won the, um, the Prix de Isfahan, okay, which is a huge 10 furlong race in France, Group 1. He won it by 10 lengths. That's unheard of to win yeah, a Group 1 yeah, by 10 lengths. So yeah. he's the best rated horse in the world of 129, which is um, a pretty high rating. Um, California Chrome, Winx, Frosted. All 126. All very and you know they're all of them. Yeah. You see, yeah, Winx is the street it's car from Incredible, Australia. these long jeans ratings. Because when you look at Talk to the Stars, he's 121. Well, by no stretch of the imagination is he 121 when you compare uh, Postponed yeah. as 124. You know, three pounds better yeah. than him. Uh, there's uh, just something yeah, not quite a, right. A, there. a lot of horses here, people are questioning their ratings. Yeah. I don't know if they're getting the higher ratings because they want to export them for races. Yeah. But uh, as you say, top horses rated in that Longines uh, rating, world yeah. ratings. And just looking at the three horses rated 126, um, California Chrome Dirt Horse, Wings Australian. Turf Horse Street Crown. Uh, and Frosted um, got beaten in the, uh, in the Derby and the, the Belmont. Yeah. Uh, but he's come back. This year <coughs> he's a good horse. He's pretty good. Yeah. So that's what we wish you all out there is a Frosted, a Wings, a California Chrome, a great horse. Uh, we'll be chatting to Joey Ramsden uh, after this about the conglomerate and about Joey Ramsden. Fascinating fellow. Enjoy the rest of the show.
Well, as promised to you, here we go. Joey Ramson in the studio, uh, fresh after winning not only the July, but the Merchants over the weekend and uh, having an absolutely wonderful season. So, fantastic to have you, Joey. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Oh, what a pleasure. It's been hard to track you down. <laughs> <laughs> it has been quite hard. We've been busy this year. We've had a lot of fun. But you've had a great season. Yeah, we've had a, well, we have had a very good season. And it's funny enough, the smaller ones haven't really sort of done the job for us, but uh, they've been being short heads and things like that. But uh, the rest have already sort of run really well. We actually haven't run that many. Well, let's just go to Red Ray on the weekend, because, uh, you know, for a horse that, to have gone to Dubai and then come back and winning a group one must be tremendously satisfying. Yeah, I have to say, really satisfying. Only not just for the fact that, I, you know, I know how good he was before he left. And uh, I have to say, I shed a tear when, when, when he went. Um, and he obviously had his, his troubles there. And uh, I never expected him to come back. There's nothing worse than, than sending a horse away that you, you feel that you should have won a group one race with and, and never did. And uh, he was certainly one. And... Uh, and you just feel like, you know, you've underachieved, even though it was actually out of your hands. Jay, Mike the Cock must have buggered him up there. No. <laughs> no. You can have a go. <laughs> no, I can never. No, no, no. no. I think the, the two buggering up there, they're one person that will be it. But um, no, I, you know, I've been out, lucky enough to have been out to Dubai with Variety Club. You just see how hard it is. And it's, it's, it's three months for the carnival. And um, they just have to they just have to be at the top of the game for that three months and one tiny niggle and, and, and you're gone. It's very, very similar to here, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. You know, you come here, I've come here with a, what I thought were a really nice bunch of stairs. I thought King of Pain would have a, have a tremendous season there. And he's just had one little niggle after the other and, and uh, he, he won't run again. And uh, it's just the way it is. It's just, you can't help it. He's talking about King of Pain because he's a beautiful horse and he's, he's obviously got tremendous ability. He's won your group one, but he's always had feet problems, hasn't he? Yeah, he's always had a little bit of foot, foot problems and, uh, and that's, that, that, that's what put him out, um, that's, that's what really sort of put him out first time. And we got him back and he was flying and I was so excited. And then um, he just managed to bruise one of his sort of fetlock joints, uh, you know, a brown concussion bruise. And, uh, and that's just put him out, you know. We, we got him back and I thought we'd, we'd had enough time to get ready for the Gold Cup and I wasn't at all worried. And then literally three or four days ago, bang, we were back to square one again. So. And, and it shows you how sensitive these horses are. People don't really realise out there, you know, you've got a horse like him who's really, obviously top class. Little niggles. Tiny little niggles, and, and, and it's, it's no good, you know, sticking your head in a hole and mooring them. You've just got to listen to the vet's advice and, uh, and just do what's, what's best for them. And, um, Brings me to the question. They race in America on Butte and Lassics. Yes. And you see these horses racing seven, eight, nine, ten years old on Butte and Lassics. Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, not sure I'm such a great fan of, of Butte. Mm. I think Butte certainly serves its purpose in, in, in training and uh, helping you along, but I think that the withdrawal times are, are more than acceptable. Mm. Uh, I have to say, I, I do think there is a case for Lassics. It's, you know, it's too much money being spent on a horse, and if it bleeds, it's just gone as it's out. And uh, those people that have bought expensive horses for the first time up, A, because they've got the money, or, or B, they want to get into the sport, and sometimes they don't even get to the race course, or after race one, they, they bled, and they've basically got nothing left. And, uh, you know, there's no harder way of chasing someone, no easier way than chasing someone away like that, is there? Lessix has always been a contentious point. I know Gary Player is very keen on it. Um, I know Barry Owens, not very keen on it. So you get this, this tremendous divide. What I'd, I have found, and I think you found as a racehorse trainer, is that horses do well on it. Yeah, horses definitely do well on it. So, so it's not something that we use a lot of. Um, a, because I'm too forgetful. Yeah. Um, and B, um, you know... I, I, you know, you, you just don't want to get you don't want to don't want to get caught caught using it. I certainly don't use it, you know, leading up to a race. Um, but that's it's. it's uh, God, I've just lost my train of thought. Uh, it, it, it all this rubbish about masking things and everything else. It, it really is. I, I, you know, I, I'm not really sh sure that that's that's. 100% right. I just like to see owners and horses stay in the game longer. People like champions and people like seeing horses that are around and people like going on the races and seeing horses that remind them and uh, that's what's having so much fun about with having the King of Pains, uh, um, um, Coltrane's, Trains and um, Disco Isles and things. It's, it's people, the public get grow fun of them. All right, let's go back to the beginning because um, that's where it all started. Um, Legal Mission was your first Oh, you've got a good memory. What a good horse he was, too. Great stare. Yeah. Yeah. And 
he was he was he was an absolutely fantastic horse. I picked him up for ten grand from a sale in Joburg, and he won us three or four hundred thousand rand and a couple of group races and things. And uh, he sort of got me going. And then sadly, some people had me down as training a slow horse, and that's probably stuck a little bit, really. <laughs> it's a miracle for me to win a six furlong race for Marcus, that's well, for sure. Well, the next year you won the, the November handicap with Tarpa Retreat. That's right. And, and you know, that was a shock to a lot of people in Joburg. Yeah. They never heard of Joe Ramsden, except those people that knew you from your days with Michael Roberts. Yes, that's right, yeah. yeah. That's, you as well, Jimmy. <laughs> you as well. Michael Roberts was a character, wasn't he? He was a total and utter lunatic, and, uh, but a real, real character. And actually a very nice man with a heart of gold. I still see the boys around occasionally. I saw Lillian a couple of years ago. Yeah. And, um, and just a stupid, ridiculous thing that uh, happened. Well, he was, he was always one of those guys that was on a mission, wasn't he? He was, he was very suspicious. He was a very suspicious man. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and he loved to pull a coup. Yeah. And Graham Beck actually, um, he was Graham Beck's first trainer. Yeah. yeah. Which is very exciting for the game. Yeah, very exciting. And Michael, Michael was exciting for the game. And, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, he tried to do it a couple of times and, and succinctly professionally failed. But uh, this one, he most certainly got right in a big way. And a, a tragic loss. He's, you know, he was one of, one of us, James. You know, yeah. you know he was a, a fantastic piss, piss taker, Mickey taker. And um, he, uh, listen, I used to sit there in this grey way and he used to love getting a crowd around him. And then all you hear is Michael taking the mickey, taking the mickey, taking the mickey, reminding them when I stayed with him what about my, anything, from anything from women to underwear to cars, you know. That's all he could tell the story. He loved having people laugh. Yeah. And it, he, was, he was a great horseman. He picked Phantom Earl and horses like that, you know, he just some fantastic race horses. Yeah, yeah, Bo Art, you know. And, uh, you yeah, know, Bo Art, that was yeah. a sad loss for him. But, yeah. Uh, yeah got stolen from him but anyway um, November handicap was uh, the, the start the first yep. gra grade one success yep. and, and you sent him up there you fancied him I very very much fancied him I, you know he just he, he liked a little bit of cut in the ground I knew they'd have a, have a bit of rain up there and uh, a mile was his game and you know everyone blames Cape Town now for, for having no pace in its races sadly I think you guys are nearly taking over for lack <laughs> of pace in races uh, and uh, of course they went a good clip that year Kretsch uh, Lecter Road, got in a beautiful position, and the rest is history, you know. Yeah. Well, then we move on, and, and the next real big grade one horse you had, Winter Solstice. Yeah. And he was a fantastic horse. Yeah, he was horse the year. Uh, and when I had him, I, I don't think I realised how good he was. Um, and, um, you know, you think you just find the next one around the corner again. And that's when you realise how hard racing truly is. But he was an absolute superstar. He won his first or second, second start up at two with Richard Hughes up, who was out, and uh, then put him away. And uh, then started getting him ready for the Guineas, where I fancied him as a big runner. He, he ran Nathan Danther, got him in all sorts of trouble the first start up. And then just getting him ready for his three year old career that, as the year of the equine influenza. And that, that wiped them out. He actually got it quite badly, but um, bounced back quite well. He ended up winning eight group races. Yeah. Which is a phenomenal record for any horse. Yeah. You know, when you think of it. You compare him to the next big miler you had was Variety Club. You had a lot of horses in between, but Variety Club's got to stand out for you. Yeah, he stands out exceptionally. The difference between Winter Solstice and Variety Club, well, Variety Club was just a machine when it came to soundness and um, anything you ever did with him. You know, He never, ever, ever had a day's problem. The most simplest, easiest animal on the world. Anybody could have trained him. He was so good. Look, even Mike DeCock did. <laughs> that... Um, I thought it was quite a credit to Mike DeCock, you know, yeah. because actually he was in your name, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, even Mike, Mike managed to win with him, so he yeah, must have been so a good horse. He must have been quite um, good. But, um, <laughs> anyway, so, but he was just, he was like this. I've never had a horse like him. You, I, I promise you, you could pull him out any day. And uh, some days, sort of, some races would sort of slip by and, and Derek and I would chat and he'd go, what about this? And I'd go, Ooh, he's still in the paddock, you know. And then we pull him out, and literally off we go. Two weeks later, run him, bang. And he's—it's just got to be the saddest thing that he's infertile because you know how does that type of thing happen? <sighs> That's not my, it's not my game. Um, I, don't, I really don't understand it. And uh, and I know Mike scratched his head. I have no idea. I really—it's just a miracle because if ever there was a horse that was just. He was so, who, who was his entire life, totally and utterly drug-free mm. of anything. Um, all right, he made a pain in the ass himself on the aeroplane. But uh, he was totally and utterly drug-free, free, sound and everything else. And never had a sick day in his life. That understand it. 
You know, you just look back and you see Cigar, who was um, one of the great racehorses in the world, and that you don't have that blood, I think is a terribly, terrible tragedy to the industry. And Variety Club falls into that, into that um, bracket. He was just beautifully bred and probably one of the greatest milers we've ever seen him. Yeah. Well, just I think now, I remember now my tread with Lassex, but uh, you know, you go back to, to what we initially bred from, which was just American crap, mm. uh, absolute American crap. We got chucked all their bleeders mm. and everything else imported here when, when guys were throwing out money and trying to exchange it at vastly improved rates and whatever when they thought the country was going to crumble. And all, all and ways of getting the money out was, was by buying the biggest lot of trash American mares, these small little jobs, and again, American stallions. Um, you know, they, that, um, that very good horse, um, he was favorite of the kids like Badgerland. Mm. You know, he, they, he bled at a walk, you know, mm. and, uh, but he produced some very, very good racehorses. But, uh, but they, you, know, you know, no wonder we are producing a degree of bleeders. Mm. And the reason why I'm for Lassex is, is because of it. it's, it's in their genes. And whether that people like it or not, that's an absolute fact. And we are, and, and some, some of these horses are under a distinct disadvantage because of what's gone on, on, on 20 years ago. No, there's no doubt, but the, the other problem was that uh, like 20, 25 years ago, we had these ridiculous rules where you had to buy a, a mare that a stallion that was um, a graded stakes winner or the dam had to be a graded stakes winner. You had to buy at the top of the market with no money, you know. Yeah, and, that's right. And, and so what are you buying? You're buying horses that people were chucking out. You weren't buying good horses. Yeah. Then, we, then the rules changed and we started ending up getting horses like VAR and things changed, didn't yeah. they? You know, he, he's, he's just a superstar. Yep, he's a super, superstar star. A lovely horse with, and produces horses with, I personally think, very nice natures. But there you are, he's a smashing looking horse. Mm. Going back to Variety Club, one of the highlights of your life must have been going to Hong Kong. Yeah, I never went to Hong Kong, sadly. Mm. I didn't. Um, I think I was track inspecting at Kenilworth that day. It was absolutely <laughs> hosing it down. And Dean asked me to come and take a few horses to gallop there. And uh, so I didn't quite make it to Hong Kong. But you're but, still. Uh, you're still you know, watched it, part of it, uh, know that was your horse. It, 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 one can never get away from that. Um, uh, yeah, my, my wife certainly never got away from it. But I, I, yeah, I, I, I never got away from it. I have to say it was, it, it was, it, it, it was hard, but uh, just seeing him win was uh, a great, great pleasure. And again, anything for Marcus, I see, whether it was a winner for you or for anybody else, I get great pleasure out of it. Well, we're going to have a break quickly. We'll be back for um, after this race. So let's go and just see what happens here. Right, uh, Gordon's Kanji is your um, uh, Magic Millions winner from this week and uh, certainly a pretty good winner. And we're back with Joe. Joe, um, Magic Millions. Can we get you there? You could definitely get me there. As I said, Chatting beforehand, the, the January is impossible. You know, mm. it's my chance. It's right in the middle of the mid season, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and uh, you know, I have to be there. I want to be there, and uh, that, that, that's how I get my clientele. Um, is is through those those months of the se season. So, I just, I just can't. It's impossible for me to make it. But I'd certainly go, come a, 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 again later on in the year. Yeah, and the June sale. Right, that leads us to the big horse, the conglomerate, the the, the horse that I, I think you you worked a, an act of miracle with this horse. Uh, you know, he never looked like he was good enough to win a July. No, he didn't, but um, I, I, I didn't think a lot of the others were, were, were good enough in the race to, to, to win the July. And they ha certainly, I thought they'd handicapped a certain lot of those three-year-olds out of it. And my, my biggest worry was, was getting in the race. And then yeah. and copying the 20 draw was, was, was a bit of a hard one to swallow. But um, I think, again, I think you'd rather be drawn a way out than sort of Two thirds out because you've got to commit and you, you know you, you you've got to make your move and I was lucky enough to have Pierre do that and uh, he just gave him the most fantastic ride. Well, let's go and watch the race and we we'll talk through it as uh, we see it. I think Raymond can get the race up for us and. I thought it was the best ride Pierre Stratton's ever given the horse. To get up there yep. in that position with the conditions that they were that day uh, was brilliant. And here we see them in the pens. Are you feeling now? Yeah, I'm ugh, ambivalent, you know. I'm very, yeah. terribly excited because I've loved them all week. Um, and then when I saw them bounce and I saw him get about a length and a half clear like this, I just thought to myself, he's going to get in somewhere nice. I cannot possibly believe it. And I couldn't believe they were letting him make it so easy for him. Well, there he is, one off the rail now um, with a black cap, um, and he's, he gets into fourth. Yeah, amazing. I think he got a little bit of help from Anton, 
But, um, you know, I, here I thought to myself, well, I'm, I'm I, even if he got caught three wide, I wasn't particularly that bothered. But he manages to slot him in right now here, and uh, he never stops travelling the whole way round. He, he, yeah, he's in the perfect position. Yep. And uh, when you look at the dangers, some of them, um, Marinaresco came yep. from Stone Lost. Uh, you've got everything in your sights that you need to. Yeah, everything in my sights. And I, you know, I remember his Grable Guineas win. And um, Anton gave him, him very much a similar sort of ride as, as Pierre gives him here now, almost exactly that ride. And funny enough, we'd always held him up back in Cape Town. Um, but uh, as, again, they're going no pace here. And I couldn't believe how lucky I was. You've got the other three-year-old in front of you. You've got um, a th three-year-old on the fence. Ten-gun salute was supposedly fancied. Um, not, they all fell away meekly. Yeah, th yeah, they did. And it was always going to be tough for them, you know. Um, and, you know, I thought so. they did the right thing pulling out uh, that very good horse of Mike Azzi's. Because, um, you know, it, it was just too hard for them this year. I, I wasn't overly enamoured with them as a crop of three-year-olds as it was. I didn't get any three-year-olds this year, yeah. um, uh, that year, so I couldn't really compare them with them. So, uh, you know, I knew how good this horse was last year and the company he'd run against. And uh, I thought we came in sort of reasonably well. Well, here you, you must have been thinking, geez, I've got a chance now. Oh, here, uh, here, there's nothing left on the table. Everything's been smashed across it. I'm nearly doing the dance of joy from uh, <laughs> playing I'm going to win the VRC derby and, and my wife blowing something up and elsewhere. And I'm just going ballistic at this stage. I'm looking at everything else behind me and nothing's coming on. And then all of a sudden the uh, mic source comes out. And, uh, but Pierre's got it in the bag at this stage. Yeah. Um, I know Marcus used to, his lifelong dream was to win the, the, the Vodacom Derby in July. You know, he's the greatest supporter South African racing could ever have. Yeah. And to end up winning it for him and him not being there must have been very, as tinged with a bit of sadness. Yeah, tinged with a little bit of sadness, but um, I'm quite lucky enough to be quite close to some of the family. And just to have Ingrid there was mm. truly, truly special. The two yeah. daughters yeah. Um, and... Um, and um, and basically, Marcus's boss. Um, it was just, it's just, just, just wonderful, and it, it was lovely, lovely like, to share the the, the the win with them and have the spotlight um, sh shed on, shown on them instead of Marcus. And I know Marcus would very much have liked that. He's not someone that likes to grab the spotlight, and I, I think it was lovely for him to see his wife get a great deal of pleasure out of something that gives him, people don't understand the enormous amount of pleasure horse racing gives him. So for him to be able to share a little bit across to Ingrid, to Derek, um, and to their son, and uh, to, the two, to the two daughters, um, was, was just a truly special moment. And, and maybe, dare I say it, he'll probably kill me, maybe even better. Yeah. Well, the point is, is that they were there, Mikhail seems to be taking a great deal of interest in the, in the horse racing at yeah. the moment. And, and I think that's a very good thing too. Yep. Mikhail's taking an interest. He's, sort of, I think, he's doing a lot more sort of the uh, international things. Yeah. And uh, he's off and about around the world. So I never really know where he is. I, I text him, um, try and keep him informed of what's going on. And so it'll be interesting to see where he all sort of slots into it, you know, ultimately in the end. Right, going back to purchasing this horse, the story is quite a, um, I don't know, if it, it's been on social media, but it's never been on television. Uh, you wanted this horse, you decided this was the horse. At the yep. end of sale, now there's, I don't know how many horses, 600 horses there? Yeah, a bit more. Right? And, and you want one horse. This yep. is the horse you wanted. horse you wanted. Yeah, and you ended up persuading Marcus to, to let you buy the horse. Yeah. And then you never, nearly missed getting it. No, but if that's not, that was later this year. That was, that was the following year. And he's a very nice horse called Table Mountain. Or table, oh, okay, our Table Mountain. Our table, yeah. Not, yeah. No, I'll take them down. What's it called? I've forgotten his name. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's the horse that won the Langerman this year. That was the horse I missed. I and, uh, but I had to do the same. I had to work very hard on Marcus to get him. Mm. But this horse was quite, was quite easy. We did the deal and got done. And uh, Marcus said we had got X amount to spend. And, uh, and, and thankfully, thankfully we got in between Derek and I. I have to say, Derek loved the horse just as much as me. And, um, you know, we really, really just... No, no, no other horse took us as much as him. Well, that in itself is an unbelievable feat, Joe, because all I can tell you is I've been to sales all my life, you've been to sales all your life. To find one horse that you really like that ends up winning the best race in your yeah. country is like it's finding a needle in a haystack. You, yeah. You've got to be a maestro. And, you know... It's hard to find that horse, isn't it? Because there are a lot of horses. 
And to find a horse that fits into your price bracket that you end up buying and then end up training to win the race has got to be the greatest pinnacle of any trainer's life. Yeah, it, listen, thanks, James. It, it is incredibly hard. And no matter what people think of me and, and uh, whatever, I, I do work very hard at sales and I make sure I try and see everything. Um, but there's obviously a big element of luck involved. But, you know, this, we were lucky with this horse because it just fitted our, our criteria, our pedigree criteria. We wanted something that would go, you know, mile and a half, 10 furlongs a mile and a half. And, you know, it came, came out of an Oaks winning mare. And, uh, and so, and, and it came into a price range. So it, all the stars aligned. Interesting getting back to the July. How did you get Pierce Graham? You don't normally associate him with 33 to 1 and 40 to 1 shots in a, in a race like this. He's such a good jockey. You normally find he's got people clamoring for him for better horses or better rated horses as far as the bookmakers are concerned. Well, I had, uh, you know, thankfully I had my fellow uh, king of procrastination, Anton, with me. <laughs> and he was humming and ahhing uh, about rides and what he was going to ride, what he wasn't going to ride and everything else. And so, I, 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 thankfully, Derek did everything. I left it totally to him. I didn't, up, uh, dry, July draw day, I didn't know what he was going to choose or who, I didn't know who the, who the number two was. From the bottom of my heart, I was hoping it was um, Donovan Dillon, um, but I did see that Pierre hadn't had a ride, and I wasn't, wouldn't be lying if I said that uh, I'd have been excited if, if, if he could have ridden it. And uh, so, you know, at the moment I drew the, the dreaded 20 again, um, uh, I still didn't know. And uh, when Derek phoned me, he said, right, you've got Pierre straight, and I thought, oh, that's fantastic, I can't believe it. Does the configuration of the track now nullify the draw to a certain extent? Do you find that uh, now with this wider, this track that's more on the outside, slightly longer straight, does it help a horse that's drawn a bit wider? No, I don't think so. Everything, everything in racing is derived from pace. Mm. If they if they go, to, if they decide to go early on, then if you're drawn twenty, you are in big, big trouble, and uh, you've got to either have a, a, a lot in hand, uh, a lot, a lot in hand or uh, just be incredibly lucky. Um, uh, thankfully, as you know, we looked at this, this race and it was obvious that there went no pace early on. He, he got over for nothing, absolutely nothing, uh, and it was a miracle. Um, but it totally pace driven, where, where, you know, where, where, where you go. He's a horse just getting back to horse, big black horse, striking looking horse. Is he going to get better? You know, he's um, obviously going to have a long racing career ahead of him. What are the plans with him? I don't know. They're up in the air a bit. Um, you know, we're thinking about doing the Champions Cup. We very much wanted to do it here. But uh, also, he didn't get a big penalty for winning the July. And he comes in the Summer Cup really, really well in. So uh, I think we're quite keen to go up there and, and, and give that a go. Um, and uh, we'll send poor old Olsen back up there with a couple of horses. One thing is that Olsen loves travelling. He does like travelling very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure he likes friends it. everywhere. Not so, he has got a lot of friends. <laughs> it wouldn't be hard to have more friends than me, but uh, he does have a lot of friends. <laughs> and uh, he's just a smashing guy. So we rent some love, a nice accommodation up there. And uh, he really enjoys it. Uh, he gets stuck in with, with Mike String um, and Matthew. And uh, they have, all have a good laugh together, and he helps Mike out with, with his horses in the morning. And he's just gaining invaluable knowledge. Is he improving as a work rider? Uh, you know, no, he's only he's improved on his waistline like me. And I took the mickey at him when I first saw him this season, and uh, he, uh, he uh, took homage to it when I was bringing him his bacon and egg sandwich down from the clubhouse, and then refused to eat anymore. So he's losing it a bit, but uh, he was the most lovely work rider. He had fantastic hands, or has fantastic hands. So I miss him from, from, from that sort of status, but it's an impossible job for, to do from the top and from the bottom. So. Joe, you've got tremendous string, tremendous um, uh, strike rate. You just are the consummate trainer. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Unfortunately, we're out of time. What do you look like for the next year? You've got some lovely two-year-olds. I've seen you put a couple of them away. They look like they're pretty good. Yeah, we um, had a bit of a dry. So we never got any. Um, we didn't get any two-year-olds a couple of years ago. Um, due to I, I don't know what, and um, and then so I knew three was always going to be. Very, very hard for me. Three, you know, the three-year-old career was going to be tough for me. But I thought I always had some nice four-year-olds, which has actually proven out to be the case. So thank heavens, you know, they've sort of come through, and I've managed to sort of squeak my way through this sort of year. So you know, we're looking very, very good for for, for the two-year-olds this year. I think they are genuinely a nice bunch, and uh, I'm very, very excited about them. It's holiday time now for them. 
And, um, and Marcus really, really came to the fore uh, with, with the yearlings for me this year. And uh, I'm very, very excited about them. I have not seen them since, since, uh, since uh, the sales, but uh, exceptionally excited about them. And, and, and even the four-year-olds look, 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 look all relatively sound, and hopefully we can go on and have a bit more fun with them. Gold Cup coming up? Yeah, I don't know, it's one of those races I really want to win as well. I've won one and run Omaha a second. Beach. And a second no, who won it? What, what, um, a what, big no, Jalad, um, lovely big horse. Omaha Everybody Beach. loved him. Domo Beach ran second, I think, oh, third one. Yeah, tossed, yeah. tossed, anyway. Yeah. I thought he was the winner. <laughs> no, I thought he was the winner, too. Anyway, the cock beat me. Won his first gold cup that year. He's improved since then. Major well. Bluff, was it? Major Bluff was my first gold Major cup. Bluff, yeah. And I'd have to say, I've got a real hunger to win it again. Yeah. And I really thought I should have won it last year with either of them. They got nil luck in running yeah. um, well, with uh, Disco Al and Coltrane. So this year, it's the same two old boys back again. Uh, Disco Al had again had a problem at the start of the season. Set him back. I ran him in the um, I ran him in the Derby just to see where we were. Whether I could then run him on July Day, and he was nowhere near fitness. So that it was everything, and we just pulled back. And uh, we've got uh, that Sommerfeld is the best training facility in the country by a long way. Mm. And uh, we've just been able to They'll get be so much. They'll be pleased to hear you say that because um, there are a lot of detractors, but it is the best training. Well, without a shadow of a doubt, there's it, no it, doubt. It is. Uh, you know, I you know. It's, I think it's just brilliant. It, there's something for everybody there. You've got every if, track you, you want. You can't train a racehorse there to give up, you know, yeah. because it is brilliant. Yeah. So I have to say, I'm much, I'm much more enjoyed being there than I have ever at Clarewood. I've, uh, I must say, Clarewood uh, depressed me. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's like a new lease of life out there. I enjoy seeing all the boys in the morning having a giggle, even the ones that I sometimes have a go at. <laughs> you know, even they bounce back and have a laugh too. Um, uh, there are a few miseries up there, but uh, it's still it's great fun. And let me tell you, the, the, the best breakfast possibly in South Africa at, at something that you cannot buy. You can't you can't cook for yourself at those prices. Sally Smart, yes, in different classes. Unbelievable, isn't yeah, it? Fantastic, yeah. Best kept secret in the world. That, I said, let's but hope not it, tell too many. I people. hope it stays a secret. <laughs> I mean, if people can't drag people into racing from there and get yeah. them there, yeah, just the breakfast should yeah. do the job, you know. Yeah, yeah. Joey, it's been fantastic having you on the show. Many, many more, more winners, and we look forward to uh, getting you back here next year when you win another big one. Jimmy, all I want to do is get my hands on that beautiful high chaparral filly of yours that you bought, bought at Magic. Ah, going to cost I you. I need to get you my hands on that high chaparral. Going to cost you a bit of money, filly. Joey. So if there's anybody out there that will let me buy Jimmy's high chaparral <laughs> filly that I've seen on the track, which I desperately, desperately want, phone 082 801 6252. I'll repeat that number, 082-801-6252. Well, if you, want to give, if you want to give Joey a racehorse to train, he's a man. But fantastic, fantastic having you on the show. And um, as always, there are some real characters. Life is a box of chocolates. The training of racehorses is a box of chocolates. Joey's come up with a couple of strawberry creams, and we wish him many more. Thanks for joining us. Until next week. Thank you.